Hi guys, it's Adam Panisi. I help property developers and property investors get into the market and show them new ways to create wealth and build either passive income or lumps of cash on their own projects. Today I just wanted to share a little bit about what I'm seeing in the market. We're at the end of 2021 and what my predictions are for the market and more so in particular Brisbane and the southeast Queensland corner is, is what I wanted to share. So what I'm what I'm seeing on the market or on the ground at the moment is stock is still limited. It has been limited for quite some time. Uh, the stock numbers are still restricted, although in saying that more stock has come to the market. Uh, from what I can see in the particular suburbs that I'm involved with, and that is some inner city suburbs of Brisbane, some suburbs uh, about 40 kilometers outside of Brisbane, both to the south and also to the north. Um, this is in residential projects is what I'm referring to. Um, I'll cover commercial elsewhere. Uh, and then also involved up towards the Sunshine Coast outside of Brisbane, um, about halfway towards the Sunshine Coast. Uh, we do have a finger in a couple of pie, uh, sorry, some projects um, that we're involved with down in Melbourne and also looking at some stuff up at Sunshine Coast, so becoming a lot more familiar with the market up here. What I'm seeing across the board in Southeast Queensland is people are overpricing their properties. So the market has jumped quite substantially, especially in the last six months. Different markets seem to be moving at different paces. So some markets have already had a massive jump and now people are asking even more money for their property. They're just trying to take advantage of the market. I'm seeing some of those properties sit around more so towards the higher end of the market. Uh, from what I've been hearing on the ground, buyers are now sitting a, a little bit. Uh, they're not as aggressive and there's not as many buyers as there were before. So vendors seem to be overpricing their property, trying to take advantage of the market. Chances are the agents are talking up the end price and, and just to get the listing, which is very typical for an agent. So what, what, an, what an agent typically does is they'll overshoot the mark. They'll promise the vendor so much more money than what their property is actually worth. And in the last six or 12 months, that's actually, the agent have actually been right. They've promised the vendor more money. And a lot of the times they've gotten it because the, the demand in the market has pushed up that purchase price so much that agents are, are actually under undershooting the mark some of the time. So now it's actually, it's starting to flip the other way. Agents are promising more money, people are listing their properties at really high prices um, and probably overshooting the mark in a lot of cases, especially that luxury or higher end of the market, um, in particular suburbs. Now that changes for suburbs when I say higher end, depending on what suburb it is, depends on the actual price for that higher end. If you just, if you look at say a median house price for each suburb, that median price varies. So the higher end of the suburb is when it starts getting up into those top few percent of buyers for that particular suburb. So I'm seeing those properties start to sit around. In saying that, land uh, is definitely still moving. So the cost of building has gone up around about 20 to 30% this year, um, give or take. And that people have to obviously factor that in when they're, when they're building a house, but the price of land has gone up substantially and there's just no land available to build anything. Um, and then off the back of that as well, once you buy a block of land or the people purchasing that land, if they don't hurry up and lock in the build contract, the cost of the build is going to go up substantially. So they, well, you need to factor that in if you're, if you're looking at a block of land. Uh, but generally speaking, things are still moving that are priced to the market and there are more buyers on the ground, but uh, there's also more, sorry, there aren't more buyers on the ground, but there's also starting to get more sellers. 
So I think we are heading into a little bit of a slower market towards or leading up to Christmas, which is fairly typical for the market. People start to wind down um, as it approaches Christmas with Christmas plans and they're planning holidays. Well, maybe not the people in Sydney and Melbourne. Maybe they're not planning holidays or maybe they are. Um, but generally speaking, the property market starts to cool a little bit um, towards the end of the year. So I think that's that's going to happen. So if you are in the market to look to buy, I think there'll be some better buying opportunities in Southeast Queensland by the end of the, by the end of the year or towards the end of the year. Um, and then next year, my crystal ball is that our market's just going to go ballistic again. And the reason behind that is it's a new year, people want to get into property, so it's fairly typical for people to look for property uh, at the start of the year, and that's generally the end of January is when it all starts to, to go nuts again. Um, so there's probably better buying opportunities towards the end of the year. Uh, I wouldn't say there's any great buying opportunities that I see. You've really got to search for those opportunities where there's not a huge amount of competition. And a lot of the times in a hot market, it's better to buy off market. Not always, but I am seeing some off market deals sell at realistic prices. Whereas as soon as the property's on market, especially in a hot suburb, there's multiple people bidding for that, for that property. So now with interest rates so low, there's talk of interest rates being lifted, oh sorry, being raised next year. I can't really see that happening. Um, to the original prediction in 2023, I think we've, after the, the additional lockdowns in Sydney and Melbourne, I think we're still in for a little bit more of a recovery at least the next 12 months or probably longer, just, just in that recovery mode because most of Australia's economy and GDP comes out of Sydney and Melbourne who have been in lockdown again. So once that lockdown gets lifted, um, we all those areas will start to recover again. Um, and from what we've seen in the past, the recovery is basically a V-shape. The economy goes down as soon as we come out of lockdown. Everybody's got all the stimulus money. Um, there's cheap money floating around from the banks. There's still all the business loans that people can get. So there's still a lot of money circulating and it'll be a V-shaped recovery again, probably not to the same extent as previous. But once Sydney and Melbourne come out of lockdown, I believe there'll be a V-shaped recovery. Uh, a lot of those people will be looking to move to Southeast Queensland uh, where, where that's available. And as most people know, the house price in Queensland is 50 to 60% of what it is in Sydney and Melbourne, uh, basically for the same house or sometimes even cheaper. So you, if I was living in Sydney and Melbourne personally, I'd be looking for a transfer. Uh, if I had a job or if I could work remotely, I'd be looking at moving up here selling my house in Sydney or Melbourne for a million or two million bucks, buying something here for half the price and putting the rest of the money either into other investments or looking, if you're, if you're in that retirement phase, or looking to retire and put, putting that into income producing assets um, that you can live off. So the lifestyle here and here being Brisbane, South East Queensland is a lot more relaxed than down south, especially with our lockdowns. Um, it's amazing talking to people from down south and telling them that during lockdowns, people were still, or we were still going to the beach, uh, walking around. We didn't have a five kilometre curfew. So thankfully our, our Premier uh, has been a bit more understanding than the other guys down south and have been allowed a lot more freedom in the southeast and it's attracted a lot more people. We've got a record number of interstate migration here and I can't see that changing anytime soon. Uh, so the, the progression of 
people from Sydney and Melbourne moving to Brisbane and surrounds, I, I believe will happen or will continue to happen for a number of years and now is is the right or the prime time to be buying in Brisbane and South East Queensland uh, before the end of 2021 or by the end of 2021. So I hope that's helped. Uh, if you're from Brisbane locally and you've got an opportunity to buy some additional properties, um, just make sure you're not overpaying. Um, and locals know the market a lot better than, than people that obviously aren't locals. If you're not local to the area, just do your homework, have a look at how much prices have gone up and see if you can spot that suburb where prices have started to move but they haven't gone up by 30% yet. So there's still some really great bargain suburbs in Brisbane and you can get something at a reasonable price, um, whether it's an investment or your own home. Our investment properties are generating 4 to 5% in some suburbs so compare that to southern suburbs it's extremely high and we've also got a massive undersupply of properties in the southeast corner as well and i think that's only going to get worse in the next 12 months thanks for watching enjoy your day see ya